Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of La Brea. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Immediately, when I watch watching this episode, a lot of events in this episode made me think of, like, Jackie Chan Adventures, you know, the animated series. It just... Uh, you know, bad day, bad day, bad day, because it's just like one thing after another. It's like, cool, uh, obviously, Riley and uh, Eve aren't in the best place because they're like, right, you, my dad's hurt and you kind of left him behind. I get it. You decided to choose Josh over my dad. Well, I'm going to choose my dad over you every time. It's just like, well, I'm going to go get some food. I could bring you something back if you want. She's like, well, I mean, if you're going to, like, kind of whatever. It's like, yeah, you know, she's not going to fight it. It was like, yeah, if you're going to bring me some, I just want to make sure I stay here to look over my dad. So, not like she completely hates Eve, but still, like, Sam should be like, no, nah, like, I, I told her to go. Like, I told her to leave me behind. And it's like, and it's not like she completely left me behind either. She left me with Ty, who has the gun. So, you know, so there's at least that. But it's, just, you know, but it's still like, yeah, you should have helped him out. It's like, she's the one that, like, got him as far as they got before, like, Luke showed up to help. So, regardless, dividing up the food, it's actually, like, I'm surprised it's not... Uh, uh, Mary Beth that did that, but it's like, no, it was like someone else that another, like, what she's like, a security cop or something like that that ended up, uh, dishing the stuff out. But that didn't last long because I love that guy makes such a big, he's like, oh, I would like, he was on a cleanse or a diet or something like that. And he's like, I need food more than these people. I was like, really, bro? Calm the hell down. But luckily, that all got resolved because he returned to Baby Ruth. And it's like, nobody gets it because, like, a giant sloth creature, like, basically sucked everything down. I say sloth, sloth creature, but it's like an ancient, like, sloth or whatever, and it's like, yep. And I love just Scott being like, yeah, nobody's getting that baby Ruth. So, now they're out of food, now they literally have no choice. Uh, Scott's the one who brings his theory to the entire group of, like, yeah, I think we're in the past. Which Lucas is like, not, nah, you're crazy, like, you can't start believing this, but Eve does. It's like, yeah, like, the fact is that... Saw a saber-toothed tiger. Those aren't supposed to be around. Uh, the hills look like... I think we're still in Los Angeles. Uh, but now they have to find other sources of food. And it's like we have to hunt. Uh, not too much hunting in this episode. Well, rather them being hunted. Because in this episode, like Eve ended up capturing a rabbit. But got you know she had to let it go so it would distract the bear that's like near them. But I did like that Eve's guilt over the whole Izzy situation because she's been thinking about Izzy a lot because I guess almost that's like maybe that's why she was like let me go like and run because it's like maybe like she felt her guilt got the best of her because it's like I made a mistake that led to you getting hurt so I'd rather like sacrifice my life to make sure you live because maybe in her own way sacrificing herself to make sure she falls down was supposed to be like her like trying to make amends because Ty keeps telling her like right it was an accident that took Izzy's like like who's to say like even if you had like shown up that things would be different but it doesn't alleviate her guilt we now have an answer to what that was about though we'll, but we'll get to it later on but uh he's like yeah I'm, I'm talking all this about me I don't know the next thing about you and Ty's like immediately avoids that but Sam kind of had him pegged like last episode but nevertheless they're out um, still looking for, like I said, food, but then the whole bear thing happens. So they went into a cave, which, lo and behold, they run into Mary, uh, Mary Beth and uh, Lucas because they ran into each other. Well, she was more so following him. But whoever laid that trap for the saber-toothed tiger came, refitted it, covered it up again, and got the saber-toothed tiger's body. So um, they can't be too far, though. They have dragged, I mean, but who knows, like, how far they could, they're willing and necessary, like, what was needed they probably dragged it as far as they needed to be. Like, wherever their settlement settlement is or wherever that person is hiding out, it's probably as far away as possible. So, it now begs questions, though, like, whether it is, like, a Neolithic, like, tribe or something that is actually there, or is it potentially other people from the Mojave, which we'll get there in a second, but that's kind of what kind of runs through your mind. Because that's why, because initially, that's what I thought Ty was. I thought Ty was someone here who was here with the whole Mojave thing. But it's like, no, Mike, he's he is a La Brea person, just like everyone else here. So, but we'll get to that soon. But um, it seems like Mary Beth and um, her her and Lucas's issue, it seems like it stems with her, his father. Apparently, she shot him. I guess, I wonder what was the circumstances of, like... Was he a was he a drug? Dealer? Like, is that why like Lucas has got those drugs and everything? Because it's like, is he like following his dad's footsteps? And she ended up. I'm I'm curious what the circumstances were. Um, 
it has to be something that is just kind of like you didn't have to do it because it's almost like in Lucas's mind it's like he's feeling like I guess like there was already tension and for him he feels like you were just looking for an excuse to kill dad and well you're already pissed at dad and just this gave you an ample opportunity to put him down like you could have found another way but you didn't but for her from her perspective it's like I didn't have much choice so they're sticking together trying to find whoever took that uh, saber to tie because maybe they're somewhere they can go for help because once again Lucas doesn't believe them to be 10,000 BC you know ends up in the same cave as um, Eve and uh, Ty. Granted, they were there first, but the one way in is sealed off, so they have to try and find their way deeper in, and uh, they end up finding a, a source of water. It's like, well, there's algae, there has to be sunlight, so I thought it was probably a bad idea for Ty to be the one to go, because obviously, like, shortness of breath and everything, but I guess in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't that long, so... Um, I figured it, and anybody like Eve probably would have the better chance because we know like she probably has like the stamina so maybe she has like the breathing control and stuff like that and she brings up the fact that she goes for like 10 mile runs or whatever like super early like 5 o'clock in the morning so I figured like she might have like the better lung capacity uh, but when they like Ty wants to show them something and we find someone from Mojave so it's like okay so I, I wonder like they probably because that's the thing of like they didn't the government didn't know about um, didn't know about uh, Gavin's involvement with the Mojave situation. Granted, once again, we found out last episode, he crashed 20 miles away, so of course you wouldn't associate them being connected. But then it also begs the question, like, like how, like this person who disappeared, like, because uh, I'm not geographic, like, geographically, like, aware, but, like, the Mojave Desert, like, spans out across of, like, four states. I didn't know that. Um, just ignorance on my on my own behalf, but I didn't know the Mojave spread across. So it's like, I mean, it also depends where in the Mojave it struck. But enough to get this person. But who's to say other people weren't there? Or you know, we see this one person, but was he the only one involved three years ago? And it seems like he was alive for most of that. They're like, yeah, it seems like he's been there a couple of years. Like we know the Mojave thing happened three years ago. But I don't know if Eve's going to correlate that together, being like, oh, that's interesting, my. Uh, husband, you know, crashing near the Mojave, like, granted, once again, it's like the thing of, like, 20 miles away, and I'm curious, has it crossed her mind about the whole, like, because we haven't got her perspective on that, like, does she think, like, right, like, her and Josh haven't brought up the fact that, yeah, Gavin did kept saying he sell weird stuff, and it's like, is does this correlate, like, it's just like, to them, it just seemed like his ramblings, and him just not being okay, right, so that's probably all they'll chalk that up to, so it's probably not even really crossing their mind right now that, hey, there might be more to that, but, uh, obviously, whoever this guy was, he gave up hope. Granted, he survived all that long, so obviously there's enough food here to survive, but he gave up. Which, obviously, the moment that they find that out, like, Eve looks to Ty, because the first time she met Ty, he was trying to kill himself. So, now it comes a conversation of, let's not tell anybody about what we found, because if we tell them, like, that, because that guy never found a way home, obviously, so that means there might not be a way out of here. Uh, because it's like, yeah, we fell from that thing. Because, like, the only way most likely out is through the same way you came in. Because um, I also also was wondering, it's like, well, we're dealing with, like, space-time continuum. So is it, like, a one-for-one? One? Like, well, obviously, they're in the past. But I'm wondering, like, is the, the time frame from crossing over to that thing a one-for-one? One? So, like, that's, like, it seems like it later on, which we'll get to with the whole Levi thing, it seems like... It is a one for one. It doesn't seem like, oh man, there's like, because you never know. Like, it might be hyperbolic time chamber rules. Like in the in the future, it's like once you cross that thing, like the time disparity is like, oh, it might be five years here, but it might only be like a month in present day. Like, because you never know that portal could alter. Like, not only is it time, traveling you through time, but it's not like a one to one parallel time. So like a day there, like doesn't necessarily mean a day present day. So like, even if they, like, it might be like a doctor who thing of like, yeah, by the time you do time travel, like, oh, the doctor's like, I'll get you back in that rough, you know, like about time you left. Oh, wow. It's actually been three months since you left. Yikes. I was going for like, it's been three minutes since you left, but you know, you know, that's just time. Time is, you know, it's not a science. Time travel is not a science or something like that, you know? So that kind of crosses my mind. But like I said, it does seem like it might still be a one for one unless kind of proven otherwise. But yeah, getting back to the point, uh, we don't want people to lose hope. You know, it's like, right, we're already in a position where like, well, kind of no food. So you might want to, 
you know, keep this to ourselves. But even Lucas is like, yeah, eventually people are going to lose hope anyway. But it's like, yeah, but let's not expedite it any faster than we have to. So we'll try and survive until potentially find a way out of this, even though now they know there kind of seems to be no way out of here. Here before you for a couple years, and they didn't find a way out. So what's your hopes of finding any way out? So they did luckily find mushrooms. And because we learned about a little bit about Eve in the sense of like why she was able to learn how to build traps and um, knows about mushrooms and stuff like that is because she grew up on a farm in Montana and she was very good at it. Like, you know, she's like, yeah, my dad taught me all this stuff. Plus, he wanted a boy. Uh, it's actually she hasn't been home for a while. and She was actually planning on going to a trip with Izzy, but. Things just never worked out. I think it was probably like the accident happened and that probably like changed everything. And just like, like I think being around Izzy just constantly reminded her of like her failings as a parent in her eyes, you know, so in her own eyes is what I mean. So, uh, but other than that, we have the situation back at camp. Uh, Riley has to perform surgery on her dad because she needs to alleviate some of the pressure in her dad's back, but like uh, draining it uh, of the fluids and stuff because Oh, like if she doesn't, her dad might get paralyzed. So Scott and uh, Josh are helping, which Josh wants to do whatever he can. It's like Riley like had my back when I was in my condition. So it's like, yeah, they want to find like alcohol or something to help him. And Scott gets a great idea of like, oh, yeah, there's that heroin we found. And it's like, yeah, it'll help dull the pain. Just got to make sure we don't give him too much. Gave him a little too much and he ends up like uh, Sam ends up passing out. But luckily, Josh was able to keep Riley calm through the procedure. So, you know. And um, were able to, you know, help. All they had to do was, at, at that point, all they could do was wait until Sam woke up. And luckily he did. And he's able to move his feet. Because definitely not the situation you want to be. Well, I was about to say it would be an interest. Well, because, like, well, Locke was paralyzed. But then, like, the moment he landed on the island, he was, you know, healed. And, you know, everything was able to walk. So, that kind of. That was before, right? Yeah, it was. I was trying to remember. I was like, was that after? It's like, no, no, no. That was definitely before. Uh, before the island and everything. So, Still not the uh, best situation to be in with all this like crazy wildlife like wolves and saber-tooth tigers and giant sloths and bears. So it's like, yeah, I always want to be you know ready to kind of bolt when the time comes. I did like that conversation between Josh and um, Scott when they see, uh, what was it? Was it Tony and Bill? Was that it? The the couple? And it's like, I think it's Bill's the one that's eating the grass. And it's like, I think that guy's eating grass. And Scott's like, yeah, his nutrition. He's just like, oh, that's gross. It's just like, I mean, you know, everyone's got their coping mechanisms. Like, yeah, there's no food and people are starving. So, because a lot of those people in line didn't even get their food yet. I wonder what happens, like, to the people who already did get their food. Like, Mary Beth did get her chips ahead of time. So, I'm curious, like, was she able to keep those? And I guess it's still like, yeah, we kind of split what's left because there is no food. So, like, everyone gets a chip, half a chip, you know? So, not like that will sustain everyone, but it's still something. And that's better than nothing. So, but other than that, we have uh, back in present day, the operations. Gavin wants to be the pilot, but obviously he hasn't been part of the Air Force for a while. So, Nathan says no. But Gavin does suggest Levi, which I was like, oh, that actor. I've see, seen him in a multitude of things. I need to learn. I'm so bad with actors' names. Like, I remember faces. Sometimes, sometimes I'm terrible at that. But I'm, I'm, I, 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 because I don't think I've ever learned his name, but I've seen him in a multitude of things. I want to say the most recent thing I saw him in was The Good Doctor, uh, which part of me is like, well, if he's here, that must mean he's not on The Good Doctor anymore. Because I think the actor who play Sam like I don't think he's on Chicago PD anymore once again I, I haven't seen I haven't seen either show so I don't know either like oh he left the show or his character got killed off because it's like because you never know production wise like whether stuff leaves you open to like work on something else I guess it just depends on the project and the scheduling and all that um but like I'd assume like because it seemed like he was a pretty like main character in it so like I said I haven't watched a good doctor at all but I do I saw previews enough of it to know he was in it earlier and on early on so I, I don't know if he's still up there now but uh, Levi and Gavin were good buds but uh, he got positioned somewhere in Germany and he took the job uh, you know obviously like he was trying to talk to Gavin because it's like right me and um, Eve are worried about you. Um, all the stuff, like, you gotta get it out of your head before you lose your family. He's like, you think I don't know. It's like, I've lost everything because of all this, but for him, he's like, he can't get it out of his head. It's like, here you and Eve are conspiring behind my back. But the moment, like, him and, um, 
Gavin are reunited, it's not the fully happy reunion you they either one would probably want it to be. There seemed to be I mean, granted their last conversation didn't end well, but still, like it just seemed like there was something there. And especially later on when they're talking to Izzy and he says, like, yeah, he chose to go to Germany, but it's like, wait, I thought you got transferred there. Like, what is it? Turns out him and Eve had an affair. It's like you were drinking and Eve needed someone, you know, to comfort. Like, yeah, he was a he was a close friend and he has feeling like whether like he's always had feelings for Eve or whether it just because of like what happened between them that spurt like maybe there that already had to be something there before that happened. Uh but now that and that also ties into Eve's talk with uh Ty where she talks about her guilt. Like, what she's really, like, guilty about is she was with someone. The reason why she couldn't pick Izzy up is because she was having an affair at the time. So, it's like, that's why that whole situation cuts a little deeper. Like, why her guilt runs deeper. But even ties, like, you know, it still wouldn't change anything. You've got to let that go. Let go of the past or it will kind of drag you down and stop you from doing what you need to now. Like, obviously, it's about getting back to your get, getting back to your order like everyone getting back to the people they care about but you won't be fully focused on everything if you're kind of drowning in the past which ty opens up about what his situation and it is what sam figured you know at least had an idea of like yeah he was sick and it turns out he has a brain tumor and because of that whole situation he ended up pushing so many people away he, i think it was that he quit his job uh things between him and his wife weren't good and it's just um, he felt like he didn't have any more of a purpose, and so that's why he was going to kill himself, especially after finding himself under these circumstances. It just probably just gave him ample opportunity, like, I get to do it away from other people. But um, it's like, yeah, if it wasn't for uh, Eve, like, he probably wouldn't be here right now. So he ends up giving Eve the gun to, like, ask her to do this for him as he tries to, you know, find a way forward, you know? So both of them finding their way forward uh, from their predicament and situations but um you did have levi you know telling gavin this which obviously for gavin it was a hard thing to hear but regardless of it all at the end of the day this is still like his family's still in danger so he needs levi to do this so and it's like i wouldn't trust anyone else to do this but you so bring my family back to me but uh, when levi goes down obviously like the machines and everything short out uh, the part of the plane starts catching on fire. I figured he made it his way through, which ultimately he did. But his pair, like, because I thought it was interesting, and and I think this speaks volumes of like no one saw the plane crash, so like it might not be like a oh it because like I felt like they would have seen like it come out of the portal. I mean maybe I missed that in the episode, but I don't I didn't see it. So that means maybe there is some like there's something wonky with that where it's like once again everyone fell from that thing but they landed perfectly okay on the ground so and levi's in the like his parachute so he parachuted out so like where did his plane pop out then and why didn't anyone else notice it like in that moment you know so that that's a little wonky and like w once again like that's why i'm like is there a space-time continuum thing of like things aren't like evened out like you think it's not a one-for-one -one. But it's just like, it is nighttime where he is, and he wakes up, like, like I said, his parachute caught in a tree. But I'm like, they would have seen the plane, so what's going on there? We'll ultimately have to wait and see where all this ends up taking us. It's like, yeah, they have someone from the outside, but the plane's broken. Not unless they're able to find the remnants of the plane and try and repair it and try and take off like that. Uh, that might be the only means of... Um, getting out of here maybe maybe not like i said also finding out uh was the guy they found alone was there other people uh the person we saw like was that like a neolithic um and once again i keep saying neolithic but i don't know if that's the proper term like someone native to these land and time or was that because like they had the fur coat with the symbol on, so i felt like that had to be not less that was them leaving a sign behind of like, hey, I'm here. If you like, not less that's someone from present day who was with the Mojave situation, and it's like, yeah, that's just their sign to be like, hey, like this is a handprint things like a connection between them, and it's like, hey, like if we're like if you ever like find this, like I was here type of thing, like I, like maybe that's what it is. So maybe they're connect, maybe they have a connection to the person that killed themselves, and like they're the only ones. Because Scott did bring up the whole thing of like, right, like cannibalism and stuff like that. He's like, oh, did you see that movie Alive? And it's like, how long it took them to get to cannibalism? And it's like, you don't think anyone else that was a part of the Mojave thing turned to cannibalism, did you? We'll ultimately have to wait and see where things kind of, probably not, but uh, you don't know. Like I said, 
that's the only body they've come across. Either the others have been scavenged by like animals, or maybe the others are out there somewhere in their own, you know, because uh, they've had three years to get accustomed to this place. So, once again, maybe they'll be our clear answer to find out like how long they've actually been going. Like, if it feels like it's like, oh, we counted down the days, or maybe they stop counting after a while. Like, it's like hey, we've been here for three years, but they're like, no, we've been definitely here like five or six. And like, then we get an answer of like the space time continuum and whether or not time moves a little differently here because of going through the portal. Like, doesn't put you on a one to one with the present day. We'll ultimately have to wait and see if we get any of these answers next episode. But, uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.